So I'm going to turn the tape over and we're going to start on verse 33. Oh, well, that's the last verse. Let's just look at that as it is written. Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. I mean, there you have it, right? That's the whole problem. Is Christ is the stumbling block. being a stumbling block it's one I've been wrestling with lately because if you've been following the show for a while you know I've spent a good bit of time um, trying to demonstrate the respectability that other faiths and non-faiths demonstrate um, throughout the world and that I think showing a lack of respect and a disdain and a self-righteousness that thwarts any possibility of communication with people of different um, mindsets and belief systems is really counter uh, productive to what I believe is our duty is to reflect the goodness of God to each other, which is in love and in listening and being compassionate and respecting the other as better than yourself and, you know, withholding judgment. And I really think that that's an aspect that's really missing in a lot of uh, what I see as, you know, the popular form of Christianity in, in America, especially in fundamentalism. Just a little bit. Which, for the most part, sticks to a, a literalist interpretation of Scripture, and I understand that, and I, I even respect that, because it's, you know, it's coming from a place of, well, this is what it says, then that's what we believe, and who are we to think differently? But the presupposition there is that those words written are divinely inspired and that that particular interpretation that has become popular is the divine inspired interpretation and that anything beyond that is another gospel and is suspect and needs to be shunned and shown for, for what it is being less than or counter to the true gospel, what they believe to be the true gospel. So I respect that and I understand that, but it, I think the effect of it often is very dangerous and leads to violence and ultimately death. And I guess what I'm saying is I think no matter what your position is, even if you're a fundamentalist, that if the, the ultimate effect of your belief system is, results in a antagonistic, isolationist, judgmental persona that is reflected to the world, then I think that's a, that ends up being a disservice to the reality of the divine nature. And in, in your case, through Christ. So it's really, and I, I think, a, 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 a disgrace to the name of Christ that 
so much is reflected to the world as being exclusionary and um, anything that's not your gospel is bad and you sort of reject anyone that thinks differently. And I think the problem with that is there's no respect for the life that that person lived, the culture that they grew up in, the communication, the experiences that led to them believing what they do, whether they believe in a system or not. I think it's, it's, it's necessary for us to respect that journey in each other and to keep the communication open so that, you know, if the ultimate goal is that, you know, someone recognize the, the truth and freedom that is available in Christ, then they're more apt to observe that and receive that seed of faith from you because there's a relationship of mutual respect that is nurtured between the two. That's my own view. Um, so because of that, what I'm saying, I go I went at length there to, to explain that because because I do believe that very strongly, it's hard for me to swallow the Christ as a stumbling block aspect of the gospel as if, you know, that's inevitable. It has to be that way. You're either receiving God's gift of mercy to you or you're not. There's no gray area there. And I understand that. So, you know, I'm just expressing to you my own um, difficulty in trying to balance those two aspects. Those two aspects being the essential need to receive Christ and the need to remain non-judgmental to those who haven't received Christ. So I guess that's not too bad, is it? That doesn't sound too hard. <laughs> now that I've phrased it that way, that doesn't. That sounds doable. All right. So let me stop for a second because I could go on to Romans 10. It's, there's a heading here saying that Israel needs needs the gospel and then another heading saying Israel rejects the gospel so I don't know if I want to quite get into that I may but I just want to think for a moment about what's going on in my life right now and see if maybe I can share more uh, tangibly with you um life-changing power that I believe Christ to be as I'm experiencing him now instead of theorizing and trying to do this exegetical exercise with you uh, I've been going through some really rough stuff and still but what I've discovered in it is a renewed sense of my love and devotion to Christ through it. And before all this calamity um, fell upon me, um, no, I don't want to say that. What I want to say is, through this calamity, I've basically expressed to God, you know, was this really necessary? Was I so far off the beaten path or the, the righteous path that you had to take everything from me to get my childlike, unified, 
vision of holding Jesus front and center. Was it really necessary to take everything from me to redirect my focus? And was my focus really off Christ? Couldn't you have <laughs> revealed something to me or helped me become aware of something that needed to be addressed? And I guess the answer is no.